Hey everyone, my name is Jack. Welcome back to the channel. I cover a variety of topics as they relate to real estate, investing, the markets, and pretty much everything as it has to do with personal finance. So if you like that sort of content, be sure to have a look around the channel. And if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. Today I want to talk about inflation and how it affects real estate investors and how you can position yourself to actually profit off of inflation, even though theoretically inflation, all it's doing is devaluing the currency, which you would think would always be a bad thing. While I wouldn't pursue a policy of inflation generally, you do have a way to benefit from inflation depending on how you position your investments. So first off, what is inflation? Inflation refers to the devaluation of the currency to where things become more expensive. It's not because the things that you're buying have changed value in any way. All that's actually changed is the value of the currency. The same amount of currency buys you less than it did before. The main driver of inflation, and some would argue the only driver of inflation, is printing new money. So as you have more money in the system, you have more money chasing the same amount of goods, which would drive the price of those goods up despite nothing really changing other than the money supply. When this happens, the prices of everything generally rises. Now, some things might rise quicker than others, and some might rise steadily, while others might rise sharply. Depends on a lot of different factors, but that's generally what inflation is. So the key thing here is the value of something hasn't changed but the money to buy it has. So now you need more money to buy the thing that's still worth the same amount of value that it was before, but now the price has changed because price is different than value. That's why you hear lots of people advocating for buying gold during inflationary periods because gold is steady. It doesn't really change much. We do mine some more of it as we go through time, but it's a steady commodity and commodities in general have a set value. And that value usually just changes with inflation and also if there's supply shocks and those sorts of things. But the idea is once once you get through the inflationary period, your purchasing power has remained because you bought something that had value. The value never changed through the inflationary period. Now when you want to change it into cash, you can sell that gold or commodity or whatever it is and then use the cash to buy whatever it is you want to buy. Whereas if you had just held cash the entire time, you'd actually be losing purchasing power because of inflation. So let's apply this to real estate. Now we're going to assume that there is a mortgage on a piece of real estate, so there is debt on the property. We'll see why this is important in just a second. But Let's take a look at the values of the real estate itself and then the value of the debt once we have inflation. So this graph represents nominal values. So just the price basically of both things. You have the property here and then the debt below it. See how the property price, the nominal value goes up because there's inflation and the value of the property itself hasn't changed, but it has in nominal terms. This is the difference between nominal and real value. Nominal just doesn't take anything like inflation into account, whereas real value discounts the value of something based on inflation. So your real value is almost always going to be lower than nominal values because we almost always have some amount of inflation. So anyways, notice how the real estate value goes up, but the debt value doesn't change. This is assuming you have something like a fixed rate amount of debt and you're not changing it. It's no variable rate. It's not revolving or anything like that. You just have this debt that you took out on the property. The debt value doesn't change with inflation because it's fixed, but the property value is not fixed and it's going to change with inflation usually. And you can see that in this market here. We'll assume there's no other forces affecting this market. All you see is the price of the property is going up, but the debt is not. And notice the increasing spread between the price of the property versus the price of the debt. It's getting much bigger as you have more inflation. Now let's look at this a slightly different way, this time in real terms rather than nominal terms. So inflation is discounted here. Notice how the real value of the property doesn't change with inflation. It stays the same. You might see the price increase, but the value of it hasn't actually increased. But look what happens to the debt. Because money is worth less than before, it's now comparatively easy to pay off the debt because it becomes worth less and less. Yes. Because this debt is fixed, you have to pay the same amount of money back, but this amount of money now is worth less than before because of inflation eating away at the value of the debt. So it's now comparatively easy to make that same amount of money as before, so it's easy to make more than that as well, making the value of the debt much lower. So the real loser here is the creditor, the person who extended the debt to you, since they now have worthless dollars coming in, or at least dollars that are worth less than before, to pay the amount of money that they extended to you. And this is what the interest rate tries to combat. Any normal creditor is going to want to make sure that the interest rate is high enough to combat inflation, so that even if inflation's eating away at the value of the money, you at least have that interest rate and the spread between inflation and the interest rate itself to make some sort of profit if you're lending money. 
money. But what's happening right now with the Fed cutting rates super low is that interest rates are incredibly low and all this new money is being printed so you'd expect inflation over the long term. And with 30 year fixed rate debt at a couple percent interest, you'd definitely assume that we'd have more inflation than that at the end of the 30 years, which would make the value of the debt worth a lot less. That's what one would think as long as there's no total collapse of the money system or it goes completely in a deflationary direction, which seems like it's rather unlikely right now, in my opinion. But even then, we'd still expect inflation to sort of eat away at the interest rate and make it seem like it's actually lower than it is in real terms. So what does this all mean? Well, as a real estate investor with fixed rate long-term debt, you're going to see inflation as a pretty good thing from an investment standpoint. The price of the asset, the real estate is going up, and the value of the debt is going down because you can pay it back with dollars that are worth less than before. This does assume that you don't get hit with some sort of variable rate that jacks up the interest rate if the Fed decides to raise interest rates or whatever benchmark it's on. That's always a risk, but with fixed rate debt, it's fixed. So if interest rates skyrocket, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that if there's inflation, it's eating away at the value of that fixed rate debt. So if you're expecting a lot of inflation in the future, it makes a lot of sense to take out fixed rate debt, assuming that you can pay for it in the meantime, because over time you'd expect inflation to eat away at the value of that debt, and if you're using it to buy something productive, like a piece of real estate or some other asset, you'd expect the price of that asset to rise in stride with the falling value of the debt. So in that way, it's almost like you're getting a complete discount on the property over the long term because of inflation. Now this analysis totally ignores the other drawbacks of inflation, like rising costs of living and a bunch of other things but it does help someone who has a lot of long-term debt at fixed rates since you're just eating away at the value of the debt while your assets increase in price. So they're not really hurt in any way. Their value remains constant because it's sort of inflation protected. The value of the thing is the same, but the price is rising because money is worth less. I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm definitely not saying that you should be going out and taking out a ton of fixed rate debt just because you think inflation is going to help you in the long term. First off, there's always a chance that that doesn't happen, that there isn't a ton of inflation. And now you're still stuck with all this debt, but there's always a chance that you default on the debt if you have a short-term hiccup somewhere. You never want to over leverage yourself, even if you're bearish on the dollar and bullish on inflation, if that's a term. But you can see how so many people have profited off of having fixed rate, low interest rate debt on their properties, because just a few years of inflation can really take a dramatic hit on the value of that debt. Meanwhile, the property's value remains constant, and you're in the green in that sense. So even if everything else gets expensive around you, your assets should keep up with those expenses, but meanwhile, your debt's actually losing value. So anyways, that's all I've got for today. I tried to make that a clear explanation for as to why inflation can help a real estate investor, at least one that has long-term fixed rate debt. Inflation is a good and bad thing depending on what position you're in. If you have a lot of assets and a lot of fixed rate debt, then inflation looks like a really good thing. If you don't have assets and if you have a lot of variable rate debt or even no debt at all, inflation is not a very good thing. And the reason I say variable debt is a bad thing is because usually if you have a ton of inflation, the Fed will often jack up interest rates and that would raise your interest rates as well, so you're not really getting that great benefit of inflation when you have fixed rate debt. But anyways, if you like this video, please like it since it helps the channel out a lot. And if you like this sort of content about real estate, investing, the markets, and everything else that has to do with personal finance, be sure to subscribe so you never miss any new updates since I put out new videos every single week. And check out my book, The One Property Retirement, about a simple strategy for building your retirement nest egg using real estate and actually taking advantage of fixed rate, low interest rate, long-term debt to actually get into real estate and start supplementing your retirement nest egg. It's great for beginners who might be unfamiliar with real estate, or even if you are a little bit familiar, it takes you through the whole process from running the numbers, vetting a deal, getting through the closing process, and then beyond that with renting and maintaining the property. If you end up reading the book, definitely leave a review on Amazon since that would help me out a lot. But until next time, take care.